Good evening all and welcome to another video on All Hail the Ale. It's Saturday night which means it's craft beer night and the beer we're going from tonight is a, from a brand new brewery to me. It's Fallen Acorn and the beer is this one. It is not without altitude and it is a 10.5% double dry hopped oat cream triple IPA. And uh, you will notice throughout February that Saturday and Sunday night is dedicated to the beers that I've bought from Fallen Acorn this month. And uh, so I'll give it a bit of a bit of something different, you know, showcase a brewery. And um, what better place to start than with the big one on the order? And it says about not with that altitude. It says we hit this hard with a double dry hub of El Dorado, Azaka and Amarillo rebrew to showcase what we've learned over the past year. Bursting with candied tropical fruits of pineapple, mango and orange combined with a soft and pillowy mouthfeel from our in-house oat cream. This beer was our first foray into both oat cream and triple IPAs and a nod to other half brewing in New York. Uh, one of our favourite breweries across the pond for the inspiration for this style. And uh, yeah, it, it's what it is. 4.6 of my 14 units that I'm allowed. And uh, just a little nod to the, the artwork. You know, it's kind of, it's artwork, but it's not. It's kind of messy painting. It's, it's pretty cool. I like it. I do. It stands out. Let's see if the beer's any good, shall we? Let's get it out into a glass and see what we think. So I've been meaning to order a few beers from this brewery for an absolute age. And uh, there was a beer that's going to feature tomorrow that tempted me to get them in. Anyway, the pour on Not Without Altitude is... Hazy. Nice and hazy. Pouring with conviction. Look at that. We've got a nice head. Let's not go too mental. That will do. That will do nicely. So what have we got? We have got a Hazy for Days beer that is nice and orange and thick. You've got a solid two fingers of white head there. That's your beer in a glass. Look at that. It's beautiful. You can't see my mug through it. That is awesome for you guys. It looks amazing. Let's have a whiff. It smells it too. First up, I'm getting Mandarin. Nice sharp mandarin, kind of like I used to have as a kid with the old evaporated milk. Beautiful, I love it. That is dominant in a big way, and I like it. I do. That the mango is there, it's very much in the background. The pineapple, I'm not getting so much on the nose, but it does smell hoppy. There is a nice hint of the booze in there as well. Not massive, but there's a nice hint of it anyway. But yeah, big mandarin on the nose, and it bodes well because I love it. So looks good, smells delicious. See what it tastes like. Cheers. That does not hold back. It does not hold back in the slightest. That is boozy. The 10.5% is right there in your face. It's like standing up on a front row with Ellis Genge right in your face and Carl Sinclair. Um, in case you haven't guessed, it's Six Nations weekend. It's, it's huge, it's obvious. The tropical fruits are right there. The hops though, they are smashing it. It's a hoppy little number, there's no getting away from that. Nice and warming from that booze. The mango is kind of supporting, it's kind of an underripe mango. The mandarin is sitting just above that and those two flavors in particular are working really, really well together. There's a nice tartness to it, a nice sharp kind of fruity edge. The pineapple is sitting in the background for me and I think maybe that's a good thing. Normally I love pineapple to be right at the front but that then makes it overly sweet sometimes. This though is just nice and bitter and that's a good thing with the triple IPA. I love them bitter and it's hoppy as hell. And all those sharp orange and underripe stone fruit flavours are sitting there at the front. The body, I forgot completely to mention the body. It's worthy of a 10.5%. It's just about right. Any less, and it would be kind of perhaps a little bit underwhelming. But it's just about spot on. And the mouthfeel, as I mentioned, it's smooth. It is pillowy. The carbonation is so soft. And as we get onto the finish, it's dry, it's bitter, it's it's got that tartness, and you've got fresh hops just riding roughshod over everything. It's 
really rather good. Definitely one if you like them boozy and orangey. Mm. I do, I do. So, before I go too mental and uh, drink the whole thing, we're gonna go to the scoreboard of joy. And this is quite revealing. Um, because it's not had a huge number of check-ins. To be fair, you know, 573 people having a triple IPA is a fair decent number. But look at that average score, 4.12. That's pretty impressive. You know, there's not many beers that get above four as an average, unless, of course, it's the first handful of check-ins. Um, but anyway, my school board of joy still features the standard five plus a new three. Let's see if we can give it some points, shall we? So, appearance-wise, it's a damn fine looking beer. It's got the right colour. It's got a nice, well, it had a nice head. That has faded a little bit, but you know, it's it's there. Love the haze. It looks the part. Can I fault it? No, I cannot. I cannot fault it in the slightest. It gets a full point off the mark. The aroma is big mandarin, and I love it. I love Mandarin. It, it just harks me back to my childhood. And no beer shouldn't really kind of make you think about your childhood in, in many ways. Um, unless, of course, you're sitting outside a pub with a bottle of Coke and a packet of crisps. Um, but the Mandarin, it does. I love it. It's huge. It's boozy on the nose. The malts, and I, I neglected to mention the malts earlier. They're there behind it. They're, they're, they're smooth and they're... They're a supporting role on the nose, but they, they balance it out. They add that creaminess and that oat. Yeah, the oat is there. It smells divine. Anyway, it's a strong one. And I will say that if you don't like them boozy on the nose, you won't like the aroma on this one. I, however, do. And when it's a triple IPA, I love the fact that the booze comes through and lets you know you're drinking it. Because otherwise, what's the point? Uh, it's going to get a full point from me. The body is superb. You know, as I mentioned soft pillowy mouthfeel the carbonation is just so fine it's like sitting on a feather quilt it's so soft the uh the, the weight of the body though like i say it's just about right any less and you'd be wanting a bit more so it's spot on it's gonna get the full point the taste oh the taste first thing that hits you is the booze it is a big boozy beer there's no getting away from that fact the second thing that hits you is the hops big mandarin flavors coming through with that stone fruit and it's and, and those two are the dominant flavors and for me that's a good thing because they bring bitterness they bring that sharpness from the hops as well and the pineapple is just sitting there right in the background blink and you would miss it let's be honest and yeah there is not a lot more to say about it if, like me, you love them boozy, then you are going to love this one. If you don't, and you don't like them in your face and smashing you with hops like a freight train, then perhaps you won't. Me, however, I do. It's going to get the full point from me. And the finish. We all know that on an IPA of any kind, I look for bitterness, hops, and longevity. I have got bitterness by the bucket load. I've got hops by the bucket load. It's not resinous. I'm not getting any resin. And normally on, on a big dipper, depending on the stuff on the particular dipper and tipper, I want that. But it's not lacking. The longevity is right there. It's dry. It's bitter. It just sits there and kind of gets you right at the back of the mouth and the jaw. I love it. Does it get a full point? Yeah. Why not? Why not? It does. So, we have to go to the value for money. I cannot remember what I paid for this, but I know, in fact, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna actually tell you what I paid for it because it's on the old, uh, it's on the old email. Let's quickly check the email. I should have prepared better, apologies. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Excuse me, go back to last week. <sighs> Here we go eventually somewhere there it is fallen acorn order i won't i won't give away what else i've ordered not with that attitude 650 650 a can it is an expensive beer it is however a 10.5 percent tipper it is very tasty 
Have I had better for the money? Hard to say because it's been such a long time since I spent that much on a can of craft beer. All my craft beer recently, in fact, since 2020 uh, and, and lockdown has been supermarket craft. It's my first foray back into paying more than a fiver a can. I think it represents good value for money because this is going to last me an absolute age. So, yeah, it's going to get a tick in that box. Would I buy it again? You bet your life I would. Absolutely. It's got everything I look for in the beer of the style. It's got the hops. It's got the longevity. It's got the bitterness. It's got body. It's got something about it. It's got mandarin. I love it. Does it get a bonus point? Is it that good? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm undecided yet if it's worthy of a bonus point. But I will. By the end of the video and uploading and I've had some more of it, I will put in the comments section below the video whether or not it gets a bonus point. But for now, the old uh, Not Without Otitude from Four on Acorn has got a four, five out of five with at least two ticks on it. Damn good. Damn good beer. So, first impressions of Four on Acorn, I like. I like a lot. I'm looking forward to the next ones. Tomorrow is going to be uh, one that I've been itching to buy since I saw it in the week. And it's uh, Lord of the Rings related. You know what one it is. So uh, keep your eyes peeled tomorrow for that one. In the meantime, I'm just going to turn around and say, that has been the beer. I've been Nick. Those down there are the buttons. You know exactly what to do with them by now. You've got the like, comment, dislike, and subscribe. Choose any combination of them as you wish. And definitely let me know in the comment section if you've tried some beers from Fallen Acorn and what you would recommend. Ciao for now. Bye.